This is the open altimeter board. This is actually a handmade prototype. And I thought what I'd do is quickly run through the main hardware on the board so you can get an idea of what it can do. Let's start with the brains. That's this chip here. It's an AT Mega 328 microcontroller from Atmel. And so on board this chip we have a small CPU, 32K of flash memory for storing the program code. That's not the same as the flash memory we'll use to store the altimeter data. We'll see that in a moment. And it's got 1K of RAM. It runs at 8 megahertz and it's fully reprogrammable by the user. The other thing we can see on this side of the board, th this region here, these are the power supply components. And so there are potentially two power supplies here, one for the glider, which is optional if you, if you wish to use it, and then one for the altimeter circuitry. And so this tiny chip here, this is the um, power regulator for the altimeter circuitry. The altimeter circuitry runs completely independently, it doesn't run off the same power supply as the glider. And actually, an important design feature is that this chip here has been designed so that it'll go into thermal shutdown before the altimeter can pull a significant amount of current. So what that means is if there's a catastrophic failure somewhere in the altimeter circuit, say a dead short circuit, then this chip will only draw 70 milliamps before it goes into thermal shutdown, which is about the same as a digital servo. So what that means is even if the altimeter circuitry were to catastrophically fail, it wouldn't bring your glider out of the air. That's an important design feature. Um, this circuitry here it also serves to support the regulator. If you fit it, if you're going to use a LiPo battery, you can fit the regulator. And these, these two components here in particular, they're decoupling capacitors. That will give you a nice clean source of power for your glider. So these silver pads here, these are the connections where we'll connect the regulator, if, if we're using it, and where we'll connect to the battery and to the radio. And so it's very flexible, you can connect it up in a number of different ways. If you want to use a regulator, you can connect this to the battery pack and then use this to feed power to the radio. Alternatively, you can take power from the radio if you have a separate regulator or a battery pack that doesn't need regulation, like an impact. Also in these pads, there are two servo channels that are connected up to the microcontroller. And so these servo channels can be either input or output. You can configure that with the program code. And when you're using this in a DLG, for example, one of those servo channels, you'll connect to a switch on your transmitter, which will let you activate the readout, the height readout at the field, and let you activate the loss model alarm. But with two channels, you could imagine other things that you could do. For instance, e-soaring. If you had one input and output, you could use this as a height limiter switch if you wrote some appropriate firmware. OK, let's have a look at the other side of the board. Right, so the first thing to look at on this side of the board is this little silver chip. This is the pressure sensor itself. And so it's made by Bosch Sensor Tech. It's a BMP085 sensor. It measures both pressure and temperature. And one important feature of it is it's fully digital. So all of the analog electronics, all the signal conditioning and analog conversion is done inside the case. And it has a pure digital readout to the processor. That's really nice because it means a very, very low noise flow. In fact, in controlled conditions, this sensor has an altitude resolution of better than 10 centimeters. I should say you're not going to see that at the field because of weather conditions and the wind. In, in real world conditions, I've measured it to be good to better than half a meter, so still very good. Another nice feature of this sensor is it's calibrated by Bosch at the factory and it's, it's calibrated for life, factory calibration, so there's no need to ever run any recalibration or, or adjustments on this sensor. The other thing we can see on this side of the board, we have this, this unit here. This is the sounder. It's a 90 decibel sounder. It's extremely loud. Um, you can hear it from 60 foot up in the air quite comfortably if you have a quiet field. And the final component I want to look at on this side is this chip here. So this is the flash memory. It's a 4 megabit flash memory. And if you're logging pressure, temperature and battery voltage, which is the default, you'll get over 90,000 log entries stored on that chip. And so if you're logging it twice per second, which is a decent rate to log at, you'll get over 12 hours of storage, which I think is enough for a whole weekend of flying. Um, finally, I just want to point out here these silver pads at the bottom. That's a serial port connection. And so this is used to download the data from the logger when you get home, and also to reprogram the firmware. 
But because it's a serial port, you could imagine using it for more general stuff. For instance, most GPS modules have a serial connection. So you could imagine connecting a GPS module into this and logging the data onto the flash memory if, if that's something you wanted to do. It's, it's very, very flexible. Okay, well that's a quick look at the board. Um, you can find full schematics and things on the website if you want more detail, but I hope that gives you a, a rough idea of, of, of what the hardware can do.